Hello and welcome to this video clip on the basics of labour markets. Um, so labour markets can be quite complex when you look at the detail of it and certainly if you're a level 7 student then you need to be looking into more detail. But what I'm going to be covering in this video clip is just the basics. So essentially um, what are tight labour markets, what are loose labour markets and um, what figures and what information would feed into determining whether labour markets are tight or loose. Um, so relevant to level five students undertaking the resourcing talent planning um, unit and also level seven students looking at resourcing and talent management. So essentially when we're looking at labour markets, it's like any other market for any goods or service. And essentially um, the characteristics are described by um, supply. So supply being the number of people out there available for work. Um, and also demand, so the demand being from organisations requiring workers, so people to undertake uh, tasks and undertake jobs for them. And essentially what determines whether the labour market is tight or loose is the balance between the, the labour market supply and labour market demand. So essentially a, a tight labour market is characterised by there being more demand, so more jobs available than supply, people available to do those jobs. Whereas the loose labour market is defined by there being um, more people, um, so more supply, than actual demand, so in terms of the jobs available. Now to, uh, to explain this, it's worthwhile looking at some examples of some figures. And we look at labour market statistics, there's actually lots of information out there. But the main one that determines whether the labour market is tight or loose is the level of unemployment. So in percentage terms, how many people are, are unemployed. Um, so what I've got for you here is a couple of examples. So if we take um, the UK as an example, lots of information on the Office of National Statistics uh, website, uh, so it's worth looking at. Um, and essentially the, the, um, the unemployment rate in the UK at the moment, and this is as of um, 2019, um, is 3.8%. So there's actually only 3.8% of um, people who are of working age who are unemployed. Now that figure in itself doesn't actually mean a great deal, but it put it into context, that's the lowest level of unemployment since December 1974. So over well, almost 45 years since the unemployment rate has been that, that small or been that low. Now, if you compare that to uh, another EU country, um, in this case, Italy, um, they currently have, so this is from April 2019, they have an unemployment rate of 10.2% and that's from the Eurostat website. So there you can see quite a big difference. So Italy, uh, so if you compare them, um, Italy has a much looser labour market and the UK has a much tighter labour market. And in terms of why that's significant, from an organisation point of view, an organisation in the UK is probably going to um, have to try a lot harder, or it's a lot more difficult to actually recruit the roles available. Um, whereas, in the, whereas in Italy, in theory, there are a lot more people out there available in the labour market to apply for roles. So that's why those, those statistics are significant. So if you're in a tight labour market, it's a lot harder to recruit. We're in a loose labour market, a lot easier to recruit. Now, of course, these are just headline figures, there's a lot more complexity to this. Um, so if you just take the UK, for example, so 3.8%, that equates roughly to about 1.3 million people. Now, that sounds like quite a lot of people, but there are a couple of kind of main issues here. Now, if you think about your organisation, the type of roles you recruit for, just think for a second, which roles do you find it most difficult to recruit for? So which roles do you advertise? You don't really get that many applicants, and the applicants you do get are not that good quality so they're not necessarily the quality that you want. Are there any roles in the organisation they advertise that you get lots of applicants for so you get almost flooded by applications? Okay? And think about what actually differentiates those, those two different types of um, application response. You tend to find that um, a, a lot of the time it's around the skills that are required for the role. So typically the higher level of skills and more, more niche the skills required is when you get um, a much lower applicant rate. So that's a kind of tighter area of the labour market. Whereas if you look at the kind of more generic skills, more low level roles, entry level roles, um, or roles where the skills are transferable. So things like customer service, management roles, administration roles, um, those tend to be a lot looser and you get a lot more applications. So even within a tight labour market, what you'll get is you get that complexity of some roles or some sectors of the labour market which are a lot tighter and some that are a lot looser. 
So that's one, one aspect is around the kind of skills and qualifications required. The other aspect is around the location of people. Of course, you know, the UK, people are located all across the UK and you get quite big differences between the levels of employment and unemployment in, in the different areas. So if you take somewhere like South Yorkshire, um, that has an unemployment rate of 5.6%. So you can see that's actually significantly higher than the national average. And you compare that to the Highlands of Scotland, they have an unemployment rate of 2.6%. So big differences there in the unemployment rate. And you do get organisations using those uh, this information, this intelligence to determine where they might um, expand, where they might open a new factory or a new outlet or a new office. Um, and that's where they'd actually direct um, their recruitment to. So like I say, there's more complexity than just looking at it in terms of the overall numbers. If you're looking at um, labour markets in a lot more detail, it's really determined by the different pestle factors and that will have an impact on, on a number of different elements of, of the labour market. So hopefully that's given you an overview just of those basic terms of um, tight and loose and the main figures that go into determining whether a labour market is tight or loose. Um, I've included in the um, in, in the link below um, links to the different sources I've used um, so that if you do want to look at them in more detail and also look at up-to-date figures because of course as soon as I've recorded this it starts to go out of date um, then those are useful for you to use.